Hello guys, uh, hope you're well. Uh, I have received some questions uh, from seafarers uh, around the world. So um, I would like to uh, reply back to these questions. Um, so one of the questions that I had is uh, actually where should I start my uh, career at sea? Should I start on board an LNG carrier, an oil tanker or a cargo vessel? So um, for me it was uh, an oil tanker, a medium range uh, chemical tanker. Uh, I would say that the uh, better uh, for you, the best option for you is to uh, start from a small vessel which uh, is engaged on frequent intervals with the uh, operation uh, in port. So why is that? The uh, reason of doing that is to uh, maintain proper mooring uh, operations training so that you become familiar with the mooring operation and of course you will see the uh, uh, more often the uh, port of call uh, called more often. What is the most important thing on board the ship? Well, I believe uh, to communicate in English language, since there are multiple uh, crew, crews uh, with many uh, officers, uh, many nationalities, it's very important to speak the uh, main uh, language on board, which is English. So it's the most uh, important thing to be able to communicate with others in English. Um, some some of you have asked me that I'm thinking about doing a, a one or two trips as a second officer on cargo vessels and after to uh, transfer on uh, LNG carriers. Uh, do you uh, think this is uh, wrong? I would say no, it's not wrong. Uh, it may be a little bit of waste of time, uh, but I would say most preferably you would start um, again uh, from a start. But it doesn't mean anything, you can start whenever you want into something new which is the LNG or the LPG or the oil tanker so no I won't say uh, it's um, something bad it may be a little bit um, uh, wasted time uh, if you go to something new uh, but no don't be afraid about it um, in regards to the uh, LNG LPG carriers uh, there's a friend here who's saying I want actually your opinion um, is there a real danger in regards to inhaling uh, gases uh, during these uh, contracts? No, um, I never came across with inhaling gases on LNG carriers. I don't know what happens in LPGs, uh, but no, we don't have uh, immediate contact with the uh, cargo itself. Uh, the cargo is contained and of course we do have uh, gas uh, sampling systems and gas detection systems on board the ships. and. I have never had an issue in regards to uh, uh, gas being detected on board the ship. Uh, what is your contract on board a ship? Well, my contract on board a ship is four months plus or minus 45 days. And this, of course, depends also on um, the schedule, on the ship's schedule, because you might be on the uh, uh, five months and you'll be expecting to disembark, but the uh, vessels uh, trading uh, will change and eventually you may go to a port where it's difficult to disembark and it's more preferably uh, you to stay on board uh, for this port. Nobody would like to disembark from a port where you have um, a high security levels so it will be more difficult for you. So yes, um, sometimes I have to overdo it more than 45 days but there have been also cases that I've done less than these uh, 45 days meaning I've done the contract the the smallest contract I've done was for one month and a half where I went in order to assist a ship uh, with a position as a chief officer and I went on board and eventually did a training to a friend who now is a captain. Um, what about the contracts he's asking, uh, six to seven months? Well, this depends uh, on the person. If a person can sustain uh, this long contract on board a ship, um, yes, uh, it is okay but should not be done continuously because years go by and of course you're losing, you're missing your family and you're losing a lot of things which are going on on a daily basis uh, ashore. So I would say that no, uh, it is more preferably that you maintain the four month contracts 
uh, at sea uh, on all types of ships as, mar as much as possible. Um, there's another question here. Uh, Captain, can you uh, tell us about the cargo containment system? Uh, the cargo containment system on board LNG carriers is not the same in all LNG carriers because uh, you've got membrane type, you've got the MOS type. So basically, uh, even if it was the membrane type, uh, membrane type has different uh, types of uh, vessels. You will have a two-stage compressor, you will have a four-stage and six-stage compressors. You may have a relic uh, system, you may have a GCU. So uh, it is different, or you may have a steam dumping. So. It is, of course, quite different. Uh, what I would say is uh, RTFM, read the manual, so I won't say the F word. Uh, whatever you are on board, uh, at sea or ashore, uh, try and get hold of the um, uh, ship's cargo manual and have a look on that and familiarize yourself with those procedures. And of course, with the emergency procedures, uh, emergency cargo procedures, which are described most probably on the back uh, of, the, um, of this uh, manual. Uh, of course there is a day, it's called Sunday, and Sunday is not only for resting, it's a day, free day uh, most uh, commonly on ships where you can uh, go and uh, spend your time on deck. Meaning though that of course you have to inform the bridge officer, you have to inform the chief officer, and if you can, you, the chief officer will inform the captain about your intentions. So it's good that you can read and you can go out by uh, keeping your diagrams and checking out on piping, checking out on equipment and uh, getting familiar with the equipment. So this is the best day for you where you are free in order to uh, spare an hour's time or two on a Sunday morning or um, uh, eve and uh, have a look at what's going out on deck in regards to the uh, cargo containment system. Um, do I need a connection to get on board an LNG carrier? Well. The reality, what I've seen over the years, yes, I won't say, I won't lie. I've seen people who were not qualified to come on board a ship and eventually did come on board a ship. So um, what happened was they came on board and us as chief officers or uh, captains, we see their performance. So if we establish that somebody is not qualified for the position that he's serving on, the captain needs to report it to the company and he will need to uh, be well trained. If the person who was not qualified is getting well trained and is reading and is showing that he's willing to learn and to improve, then I as a captain personally will help him out. But if there is a person who does not give uh, attention to uh, his job or his future job, of course he's not going to continue to be on the ships. So the connections are good. And uh, I would say to all the people who are using their connections to their companies, make the, your connections proud for the reason that they employed you. Because at the end of the day, they will also be questioned, why did you bring him to the company? So my um, point of view is that we need to help uh, people come on board the shipping industry. And of course, the people who are coming on board need and have to do the best in order to prove that are worth and they're getting worth well paid in order to be in this position. So uh, these were a few questions in regards to, uh, to the uh, uh, ones I got online. One which I got from the Instagram was um, as an officer on the watch, uh, what do I need to do? Uh, well, basically is to maintain a safe navigation watch. You have to uh, do the procedures which our company uh, or the other companies have which is uh, complete the checklist, go through the checklist, perform an actual and well uh, prepared watch. You have to be rested, uh, you should not be fatigued, and of course you need to call the captain at any time that you require. I uh, usually, um, I got this from a captain, uh, an English captain who uh, had stated down, uh, I don't know and I don't have the answers to everything, and um, if you need uh, your assistance, if you need my assistance, you better call me in order to find a solution. So I'm on this concept, so if there is somebody who uh, needs some help uh, during the watch, it's better to call the captain to come up to the bridge, ask for the master standing order state in order to find a solution and uh, eventually solve the problem. So uh, the second officers on the uh, bridge need to perform a safe navigation, as I said. Uh, keep their eyes open, check on the cargo containment system, of course, 
check on the pressure and check on the radar screens and of course look out because it's not only the radar it's the actual actual visual uh, uh, lookout that you make and to be aware you have to have your situational awareness uh, tight at all times in order to perform a safe navigation watch. So these are the uh, questions that I've got. If you would like to ask any other questions, feel free uh, on the comment section below. You can write the, uh, your comments and I can get back to your uh, questions arise in order to uh, uh, help you out. If there's something which you'd like to ask in person, please feel free. Uh, the links to, the, um, to my social media can be found in the uh, initial uh, page and feel free on asking there too. So I'd like to thank you. Uh, stay safe uh, and keep well. Goodbye.